Good evening and welcome to the BBC's News at Six. Anti-racist protesters breached security around this building, BBC Television Centre, this afternoon, bringing the controversy over the appearance of the BNP's Nick Griffin on Question Time to the heart of the corporation's work. The BBC's decision to include the leader of the whites-only party on the programme has led to accusations that it's giving credibility to racists. BBC bosses say they had no choice once the party gained two seats in the European elections. First, our Home Affairs correspondent, Daniel Sanford, on the protests. This is the moment that anti-fascist protesters surged into BBC Television Centre in London. They'd been demonstrating peacefully 50 yards up the road, but suddenly ran for the vehicle gate, breaching it before police and security guards could close it. Some protesters made it to within yards of the studios, furious that the leader of the far-right British National Party has been invited onto BBC One's Question Time tonight. This is the main gate to the BBC, which was breached just a few minutes ago. The police have now managed to form a cordon across the gate, but no vehicles are coming in or out. And for now, the situation does seem to be back under control. Those protesters that had been caught were led away before their hate figure arrived. A baseball protest! Go through the gate! Go through the gate! Fine, thank you very much. Yeah. How was it getting in? Um, a little bit tricky. The gates weren't open, but we're here now. It's all right. <laughs> Nick Griffin came through a side entrance a few minutes later, trying not to look ruffled. No, 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 he's in here. So now you're here, what are you expecting from this evening? Oh, a fair old political rough and tumble, I should think. Can we get the gate open, please? And with the recording of Question Time due to start within the hour, hundreds of protesters are still blocking the road outside the complex. Daniel Sanford, BBC News, at Television Centre. Nick Griffin has said that his appearance on Question Time tonight could be the event that launches his party into what he called the big time. Here's our political editor, Nick Robinson, on a row that split public opinion and divided politicians. A drink before the night he's long dreamed of, the night he's treated like any other politician. But Nick Griffin, the leader of the whites only BNP, is not like other politicians. Most Euro MPs don't have dark suited heavies waiting outside for them. Most don't inspire fear and hatred. Certainly if you look at some of the newspapers today uh, and look at uh, quotes attributed to me, they're appalling. And if they were true, I'd be a monster, but they're simply not true. Up until now, other parties have shunned Griffin. Tonight, they'll debate with him on Question Time. The BBC has been sharply criticised for the invitation. If there is a certain level of support, it is fair and non-partial, non-partial, for them to be given a voice, to be scrutinised alongside other parties, and the BNP have qualified for that. The BNP leader's delighted with the publicity that the argument about his appearance has generated. Others are dismayed. Nicholas John Griffin from the British National Party. This is what led to the invitation to go on Question Time. Nick Griffin and a colleague were elected Euro MPs, though the party got just 6% of those who bothered to vote. This is what Nick Griffin used to look like, a man who marched for white power with the National Front, whose demonstrations frequently erupted into violence. Nick Griffin presents his party as the party of Britain. A few years ago, he declared that the ultimate aim for me and for the BNP still remains an all-white Britain. Griffin leads a party which excludes non-whites from joining. He once described Britain as a multi-racial hellhole. After losing a court case, he now says he will ask his party to change its rules. Griffin uses images of the battle with Hitler to promote the BNP, but when it comes to the Holocaust, he declared in court that orthodox opinion is that six million Jews were gassed and cremated. Orthodox opinion also once held that the world is flat. He now says he's put that view behind him and that Hitler was a very bad thing. Tonight, the BNP's leader believes people will be able to make their own minds up about what he stands for. It's clear, though, that many already have. Nick Robinson, BBC News, Westminster. 
The BNP leader and other officials from the party have already appeared on several of the BBC's news programmes over the years. So what's different about Question Time? Nick Hyam looks at tonight's debate and why it's become so controversial. The BBC maintains it has no alternative but to give an elected politician like Nick Griffin a platform from time to time. These protesters think letting him on Question Time simply gives Nick Griffin and the BNP legitimacy and credibility they don't deserve. The debate's made all the more heated by the particular nature of Question Time as a programme. Welcome to Question Time. For 30 years, Question Time's been one of the most popular current affairs programmes on television, a place where the public and politicians can cross swords on a huge range of issues. And it can change perceptions. Diane Abbott is a prospective Labour candidate for a London constituency and could well become Britain's first black woman MP. She is on the this was Diane Abbott on the programme in 1986. Her appearance helped make her career and showed black politicians were part of the mainstream. She fears the same thing happening to Nick Griffin and the BNP. This is a violent, fascist party. And putting them on question time, whatever they actually say gives a signal that somehow violent fascism is part of the political mainstream. Jean-Marie Le Pen, seen here with Nick Griffin, led the French far-right party, the National Front. He dated the start of his success to a similar appearance on French television in 1984. But others say the BBC can't ignore the leader of a party with two Euro MPs. It is not an issue for the BBC to decide who should be a political party and who people should vote for. There can't be any criticism of the BBC. There can't be any criticism of Question Time. There could be criticism, actually, strangely, of the voter. The voter is the person that's put the BBC in this position. Issues. Some say Question that, Time's format makes it difficult that. to subject extremist okay, politicians to rigorous questioning. What's desperately important is that his real views, not the kind of moderate views that he tries to give you, but his real views about issues actually do emerge. And that's what the rest of the panel have got to ensure happens. Hello, and uh, here we are for the first of our weekly question times with an audience. They're what's described in TV circles as real people to distinguish them from people who work in television. Thirty years ago, the BBC hoped Question Time would provide a forum for national debate. Whatever else, tonight's programme, likely to get a very big audience, is doing just that. Nick Hyam, BBC News. Well, let's talk to our correspondents now. In a moment, we'll get the latest from our political editor, Nick Robinson, from Westminster. But first, let's go to our Home Affairs correspondent, Andy Tai, who's outside BBC Television Centre now. Still lots of people there behind you, Andy. What's the mood? Well, people are still feeling very passionately indeed. As you say, they're showing no signs of tiring. Indeed, more people seem to be gathering uh, by the hour. A lot of activity behind me outside the main gates of uh, Television Centre. People I've been speaking to tell me they're very angry with the BBC for allowing Nick Griffin a voice, allowing him on to question time, and really they want their voice to be heard, just as his voice is likely to be heard later this evening. But they also tell me, many of them, that they're still hopeful that even at this, the last moment, the BBC can be persuaded by virtue of the strength of numbers here to change its mind, to cancel the taping and to cancel the broadcast of tonight's question time. All right, Andy, thank you. And Nick, to you in Westminster. Nick, you could argue this is just about one programme, but it's bigger than that, isn't it? How, how big is it for British politics, do you think? Oh, being no doubt, this is a big moment, George. Nick Griffin himself believes it's the moment he will be catapulted from being a marginal extreme figure who is looked at warily by the media and shunned by all mainstream politicians to being a political figure who simply cannot be ignored. Those who loathe what he stands for, those who fear him, fear he may well be right about that. It is, of course, though, a culmination of a long process, a process in which people have deserted mainstream parties, a process in which the voting systems have been changed, make it easier for marginal and extreme forces to get into uh, the European Parliament, and indeed a process in which people have chosen to vote for the BNP in greater numbers. And that maybe is the thing to remember tonight, George. No one television programme, no one appearance gives power to any politicians. People do. They have to choose whether to vote for him or whether not to vote at all, make it easier for him to get his way. That is their choice, not the broadcasters. OK, Nick Robinson at Westminster and Andy Tai outside a television centre. Thank you both. And you can watch Question Time after the news at 10.35 on BBC One.